As interest in the potential of open RAN grows across the industry, there's one particular development that's attracting a lot of attention, the role of the RAN Intelligent Controller, or RIC, which is increasingly being referred to as the brain behind an open RAN deployment. Well, to find out why this is deemed to be so important, I'm talking today with Paco Pignatelli, Head of Open RAN at Vodafone, and Constantine Polychronopoulos, Vice President of 5G and Telco Cloud at Juniper Networks. Uh, Paco, Constantine, thanks for joining us today. Uh, Paco, let's start with you. Uh, how should the industry be working together, collaborating, to realize the promise of the RIC? That, that's a very good question. I mean, to start, uh, we, we know that uh, um, RIC is built on top of Open RAN, so, so these uh, basic radio deployments, so these uh, can sound obvious, but we need to have uh, more uh, deployments being committed from operators out there, uh, and that will uh, push uh, RIG to, to happen. Uh, if we look at the uh, standards area, I think the Oran Alliance has, has done an amazing work uh, building the standards, developing the first specifications, but if we look at RIG, it's uh, a little bit behind. There's been a few delays in uh, near real time RIG and also. Um, uh, open APIs uh, that uh, take us uh, to end of this year or mid next year. Uh, we should be adding more bandwidth to close them and, and make sure we capture the feedback from the R&D uh, as, as, as early as possible. And ultimately, I think uh, it's also something that needs to be supported even better from uh, the radio um, uh, suppliers because uh, we need the DUs to interface with the rig. And in some cases, uh, we see a lot of uh, difference in time between what suppliers are offering. Okay, great. Now, uh, Constantine, can you tell us about the progress being made in terms of standardization of the RIC and about customer field or, or lab trials that are ongoing? Uh, absolutely, Ray. Uh, Paco mentioned uh, the excitement and the activity that is going on at Oran. We have, what, uh, more than 300 uh, participants, uh, pretty much all the tier one operators, global operators, um, uh, everybody on the vendor and the technology supplier side, uh, a lot of excitement about the radio intelligence controller, right? I mean, it's a transformational technology that gives us the opportunity now to turn the radio into a smart asset uh, that reacts in real time um, based on what the users do, you know, the user experience as the network can monitor it, um, address, you know, efficiency uh, of operations, automation, et cetera, et cetera. The, the, the list is endless. Um, the last year alone, Oran has released, uh, I think, upwards of close to 50, I think 48, if I'm accurate, um, uh, specifications, about 48 releases, which shows the progress uh, that has been made in the community. Of course, pretty much everybody has announced uh, or delivered solutions on the RIG front, uh, full interoper interoperability, for example, with uh, uh, some of the radio vendors. Uh, everybody is getting active, either releasing product and solutions or getting um, active to, to be compliant with Horan. So a lot of excitement there. Now, if we look at uh, adoption, yes, things have not uh, started happening in earnest yet, but I think it's a, ma a matter of time. Um, if you look at um, you know what major operators are saying, I think 2023 is going to be a year of uh, intense activity around deployment. Um, at Juniper, we're involved in at least a dozen engagements uh, with operators who are, who are in the process of trialing. Uh, we're working very closely with uh, Paco's team at the Vodafone. Uh, and uh, I believe that, you know, if you look at uh, what is going to drive the use cases and uh, adoption are primarily the applications. Okay, and the applications, of course, are absolutely key uh, for the RIC. Uh, so, Paco, which X apps or R apps do you consider to be a priority for Vodafone? And how are you working with partners such as Juniper for your RIC requirements? I think there is a bit of an evolution in the uh, type of applications that we will see. First, we need to go 
and somehow mimic what we were having in the traditional radio with uh, applications that could be seen as a sort of cell optimizing network type of uh, solutions. Then gradually capture the opportunity with the rig and uh, move into real time and uh, uh, do nice things with the uh, scheduler, for example, increase capacity and, and manage uh, uh, the, the, the radio resources uh, with a, a speed that is unseen so far. And then ultimately, it will be more about uh, adapting to uh, specific verticals and specific solutions for um, uh, customers from different, uh, different uh, segments and different industries. When it comes to our collaboration with Juniper, uh, it's all going uh, really well. It's uh, over two years now that we're working with in uh, uh, discussing uh, uh, several use cases and actually trialing some of them around admission control um, in uh, uh, real time and near real time um, uh, scenarios. And then also uh, looking in, into uh, other other potential use cases like traffic steering and, and the dialogue is open to uh, do um, uh, use cases around AI and uh, ML. Uh, we are really excited about this partnership. Okay, fantastic. Uh, and Constantine, how is Juniper progressing with its RIC developments? And how is the company working with the broader ecosystem? Yeah, Ray, on the partnership front, there's so much activity we can barely keep up. <laughs> We're working, of course, besides our customers, we're working with uh, several partners uh, to, do, to achieve uh, full integration, interoperability, and uh, showcase some of the critical use cases. As Paco said, we have uh, already demonstrated the value of admission control, traffic steering, SLA assurance for network slicing, which I believe is going to be critical. Um, and uh, we're working with uh, all the ecosystem partners from the radio, like Parallel Wireless is a key partner of ours, CASA Systems, uh, to uh, core vendors like Athernet and other uh, key partner of ours, uh, to some suppliers like AirHop. We're working very closely with partners to really bring the power of Voran to, to reality. Um, at Juniper, I would be, um, I don't want to, to really uh, 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 go ahead and make announcements, but we're just very close to making uh, GA uh, within this year. And I'll keep uh, the excitement uh, secret right now. Uh, we have already uh, limited availability. We're in field deployment uh, with um, a couple of uh, partners and uh, customers. And in you know, Vodafone in particular, we are moving from uh, lab trial to field trial in the coming weeks. So I would say, you know, overall, we are at a great point uh, just before adoption again uh, is going to really take off in the next, you know, several months. Uh, I couldn't be more pleased by, you know, where we are as, uh, as a company today at Juniper. I, I might add here that uh, we play a vital role at uh, Oran, our team leads, um, Task Group uh, 1 on uh, network slicing uh, and, and Task Group 3 and the use cases. Uh, we are the biggest contributor in Oran and uh, we have active participate in, participation in six of the 10 working groups. Yeah, I mean, there's a, a lot of activity going on across the industry and a lot of use cases are being explored. Uh, now, Paco, the topic of private mobile networks is just as hot as Open RAN and the RIC. Uh, what role do you see for the RIC in private mobile network deployments? Yeah, that's a good one. I think uh, Open RAN itself is, uh, is very well prepared for MPN type of scenarios because uh, the radio is uh, easier when you have uh, lower power scenarios, when you have dedicated schemes, and that's what you get with MPN. So you if you have uh, that type of environment and then you, you are able to build on top applications, uh, it, can change, uh, it can change what we have today in, in terms of solutions. Uh, and it also enables a new world for different companies. If, for example, if we, uh, let's think about the, some of those con uh, consultancy firms that have uh, uh, customers that they work with the several industries, I mean, the likes of, I don't know, Accenture, 
um, Capgemini and, and so on. And they, they, they have the customers they, themselves. They, they can have also uh, software development capabilities. So knowing what the customers want, knowing um, how to develop software, uh, the opportunity can be there very easy to, to install and, and deploy um, applications in the rig. So suddenly, um, going from a customer need to a solution uh, delivered can be faster and, and possible in a way it's never been before. I think the opportunities are endless. And uh, uh, Constantine, you mentioned uh, network slicing earlier on, and this is also a hot topic, one that's been talked about for years already, as it's seen by many as one of the most important capabilities that 5G can deliver. And the RIC can play a role in enabling slicing. Uh, what are the main challenges in delivering end-to-end -end slicing and orchestration across the radio access core and transport domains? And what is the role of the RIC here? Uh, thanks, Ray. That's, a, that's a, an overload question. I can spend the rest of the day talking about this, but let me address it in two parts, right? Let me, for a moment, um, stay on the end-to-end -end network slicing, the complexity of being able to deliver in a programmatic, declarative way a use case that can span an entire network, an entire country, or it can be regional, right? Uh, you have to bring all the parts of the network together to deliver the SLA, the QoS, the use case, and that involves uh, the core. Uh, in many cases, the internet itself, where applications may be residing on the cloud and public clouds, the core network, the transport, the various parts of the transport, and of course, the radio. And the radio is the most complex part of the network. So far, we have not been able to really manage uh, quality of service, let's say, or, or uh, money, you know, uh, control in, in real time how the network, uh, the run, uh, behaves. With the radio intelligent controller, we have a great opportunity now to uh, manage in real time, near real time, how the radio reacts to a uh, number of users, for example, the type of users, the type of use case applications, it's, it becomes really smart as you refer to it. Uh, it you know, the rig becomes the, the brains of the, of the radio access. And it's an essential part to be able to deliver the end-to-end -end use case of network slicing. Um, if we look at you know, how network slicing is going to be used, of course, 3GPP and ORAN have focused on some of the major use cases like uh, EMBB and URLLC uh, and machine, massive machine to machine communications. But I believe we're going to see a lot more innovation in that space. For example, the ability of operators to offer private mobile networks, leveraging network slice. And I feel very strongly about this. Um, we at Juniper are working both on the uh, private mobile side with our colleagues at uh, MIST, as well as with our um, uh, telco operators to bring this you know, new flavor uh, and powerful uh, view of a uh, private mobile network uh, to reality. Okay, so, I mean, a lot of really important developments going on here and really interesting to hear how Vodafone and Juniper are working together around Open RAN and the RIC. So, uh, Paco, Constantine, great to talk to you today and thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.